Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps of excitation of the skeletal muscle fiber. At the conclusion of this video, we will continue on to a secondary video, which will focus on the contraction cycle involving actin myosin and two regulatory molecules. So the first thing to start with for excitation of a skeletal muscle fiber is going to be to outline the major important structures. The first being a motor neuron transmitting signals down from the brain. The second being the receptors for the neurotransmitters, which will excite the skeletal muscle fiber. A pair of receptors um, that are activated on the skeletal muscle fiber membrane. The dark blue is going to be a long-lasting voltage-gated calcium channel. You can think of this as being sort of an electrical sensor. An electrical sensor that is activated by voltage and is activated for a long period of time. When that gets activated, it activates calcium release channels shown in light blue here. And when those calcium release channels open up, it is going to allow the flow of calcium out of the sarcoplasmic reticula, which is the fifth important structure here, shown as dark blue bars, with calcium inside as green. And one way that calcium gets stored in such high amounts within the sarcoplasmic reticula is going to be because of calcium ATPase pumps, which are vital to maintaining calcium concentrations at rest and then allowing for a rapid contraction once those calcium release channels, shown in light blue, open up. The seventh important structure to make note here are going to be all the myofibrils that are packing the cell of um, the skeletal muscle. The myofibrils have sarcomeres, which is the basic contractile functional units of a muscle, and those are indicated and outlined by black bars. And when we finish, we will finish with calcium binding to the structures in the myofibril and then we will continue on to a secondary video for contraction. Now, the first thing that you need is going to be an electrical signal coming down from the brain that is going to stimulate the skeletal muscle in order to initiate contraction. So, the first thing, like I just said, is you have an action potential, which is an electrical signal coming down the motor neuron. When it comes down to the end of the motor neuron, that stimulates the release of acetylcholine, and acetylcholine is the major excitatory neurotransmitter for any muscle contraction. And when acetylcholine gets released, it binds to its specific ligand-gated receptors on the surface of the muscle fiber. And the cell membrane or surface of the muscle fiber is called the sarcolemma. And upon binding, it's going to stimulate skeletal muscle action potentials, or skeletal muscle electrical signals that go in both directions down along the cell membrane. And as it travels down the periphery of the cell membrane, the action potentials can also permeate the cell as well. And it's able to permeate the cell because there are extensions of the sarcolemma called T-tubules. And these are really important to allow the, elect the electrical signals to travel all the way through the muscle fiber deep into that cell. And therefore, will ultimately allow for, allow for the stimulation and exciting of all the myofibrils, not just the ones that are closest to the surface. So I'll continue drawing these arrows just so you can get a sense of where all these action potentials are going. Now... The importance of these action potentials is the fact that they are electrical signals. And being electrical signals, when they get to the long-lasting voltage-gated calcium channels, which detect electricity, they are going to activate them. So they're going to activate all these voltage-gated calcium channels. And once those get activated, it's going to stimulate the opening of the calcium release channels. So all the calcium release channels will become open now and that exposes the sarcoplasm of the muscle cell 
to calcium. In other words, it's going to make this electrochemical gradient that was built through the calcium ATPase pumps, by which all the calcium is pumped into the sarcoplasmic reticula, available. So here we have secondary active transport, and what's going to end up happening is all the calcium, or at least an immense amount of calcium, is going to rush out through those calcium release channels. You could think of it as you open up a water valve and all the water flows out. In this case, that water is going to be calcium. And the importance of the calcium here is that once all the calcium rushes out, the calcium is going to bind onto important regulatory molecules within the myofibrils. And once it binds to those myofibrils, those regulatory molecules, the steps of contraction can occur. And indeed, that is what's going to happen. And that is where we are going to pick up for the secondary video. We are going to pick up and focus on what is going on within the myofibril at each sarcomere, what does calcium specifically do, and how does contraction actually happen? Okay, so we're going to focus on technically what I drew blue circles around right there. Now all this is going to be the steps of muscle excitation, the steps that are involved in exciting the skeletal muscle fiber in order to contract. So in the next video, we will go through the steps of contraction to give you the full muscle excitation contraction coupling process that happens in all of your skeletal muscle.